Ladies and gentlemen, internet, my name is Pratyom, and yes, this video is long, and yes, this video is the ultimate compendium to bundle all four parts of my season rankings of Big Brother into one massive video. All 21 mainline seasons of Big Brother from BB2 to BB22 can be found here ranked from worst to best. I've also put the timestamps, by the way, in the description if you want to hop around. I realize that's very much important for ease of use. And yes, I have also included the hype trailer. And in case you're out of the loop, I will just say I have always wanted to rank the seasons of Big Brother, but I also knew it would take a while and likely couldn't be completed in just one week. So I split my time into four parts over the span of a month, created four separate videos, and this video here is the result. This is what I was aiming for. Enjoy. Welcome house guests. I'm Julie. Take a deep breath and a good look at the faces around you. The people you're standing next to may become your friends, but ultimately, they are your competitors. It's you against them in a summer-long power struggle for a half million dollars. This is a game, and there can only be one winner. Two down, eight more to go. I'm, I'm a floater right now. Um... I have both sides thinking I'm on their side, and you know, it's really just coming down to who's power. Stick Jace up, nothing he can do about it. I always expect unexpected. I choose to evict you, Diane. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jenny. Bye bye. I can't find an individual to hate because I hate you all. Congratulations, Dick. Yes! 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 We've won this whole thing! It's done! We're party time, brother! <laughs> We're done! Cheers. Anybody want cake? Want to help the fight started or what it's about? Oh, no, no, no! I know exactly oh, what the fight's about! Yeah. I know exactly what the fight's about! There's in people's faces, damn it! Okay, it's inappropriate! Great. You've been lying to everyone in this house, you are the rat, and we figured it out, and you got caught. It's just the way it works. Flurries, you better grab a light with us. Who was it, man? Who was the eyes? Like, I thought the brigade. You're the brigade, bro. You down with that? I like it. Beast. Brigade. Animal. The brains. I am ready to turn this house upside down. Nobody should feel safe. I'm going to make a few people quiet, that's for sure. Tomorrow, your game is over. In this game, you'll never earn my trust back. You know what you did. And in this game, you're dead to me. Perfect. I did not. I swear to you, I did not. Candy. Whatever it is. And that, people, is how you win $500,000. He hit me with the first jab. That gives Zach Attack the green light to come back with an uppercut, and I play dirty. I'm going below the belt. Time for some blood, people. I'm sorry. Austin, I brought you a big team. Good luck, Austin. Yeah! Yes! 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 Uh, that's mine! One! I earned my way back into the house. I pretty much got the one-legged girl to win a foot race. I don't even have to make a joke. I can't believe on my daughter's birthday. You are disgusting! Just both. Alright, okay. The way that you said it made it worse! I would have been the one for you! It almost this is horrible like to do this to one of you guys, but Nicole, I'm so sorry. I have to tell you guys. Go. We don't know who's going tonight. It's like crazy right now. I'm just gonna rip up my questions because I'm gonna be like, I, I, I don't even know what to say. I, I, depending on who, I, I don't know. Well, wish me luck. We are live and the past hour in the house has been absolutely crazy with accusations flying and secrets exposed. We have absolutely no idea What's about to happen tonight? Welcome to Big Brother. <clears throat> We're finally doing it. We're ranking the seasons of Big Brother. After having rewatched every single season and then forgotten like everything from the first half of my rewatch, we're finally here. The top of the mountain. It's a beautiful sight. 20 years of big moves, big games, big players, winners, seasons. Let's do this.
But first, ground rules. And I would strongly recommend not skipping this part of the video because it's gonna set the stage for like the next 20,000 words I'm about to write. Rule number one. I'm already pulling a fast one and not including every season. Just because a season has Big Brother in front of its name doesn't mean it's on this list. I'm not including Big Brother season one because it's a different show and literally nobody's asking for it. I'm not including Over the Top because I didn't watch it live and it's also kind of a different show. And I am not including either season of Celebrity Big Brother because they're barely half a season of the regular version, they're offshoots, and I would prefer to rank the mainline versions in one place. This list will feature Big Brother 2 to Big Brother 22, 21 seasons in total, and I think that makes the most sense for what I want to accomplish with this series. Also, <laughs> no Big Brother Canada, that's just a different show altogether. We are strictly talking canon BBUS. One day in the future, I will incorporate all of those seasons, but not right now. Rule number two, this is all about my personal taste. I am not saying my least favorite season is objectively the worst season, but for me, it is my least favorite. I'm sorry if you disagree with my taste. Rule number three, and this is going to be the most important rule of all for processing what I'm about to say, and it's something I didn't give as much importance to over the years as I read other people's season rankings online. There are a lot of ways to watch Big Brother. You can watch episodes live three days a week, you can binge a season after the fact, you can watch the live feeds, sometimes just the live feeds and nothing else, not even the episodes. You can watch both the feeds and the episodes to varying degrees, or maybe just the highlights on YouTube. And I can say that I haven't watched every single season the same way. And this has greatly affected my viewing experience for better and for worse. None of these viewing combinations are wrong or invalid, but they do drastically change how I feel about each season when it comes to ranking them, and I just wanted to point that out because it definitely affects my rankings. Half of these seasons I have watched live, half of them I have not watched live, and a lot of them I have watched in varying degrees of live feeds. All that being said, yep, it is finally time to program our Chenbot motherboards into overdrive as we begin the long trek to rank every season of Big Brother, starting with number 21. Also known as Dead Last. Whew, here we go. It's Big Brother 19. What was your favorite flavor of Kool-Aid that Paul made in the house and was it good? Oh, it was like a cherry flavor. Yeah. It was delicious. Anything Paul makes honestly is good. I can see why last season they thought he was like an undercover chef. And I will say this now, I like most seasons of Big Brother. I can appreciate what all of them bring to the table. Of the 21 seasons, only three of them I truly do not care for, and BB-19 is far and away at the bottom. I dislike BB-19 so much that I will say right now, it is my least favorite season of reality television across both Big Brother and Survivor, across every iteration, including International. I would watch my least favorite season of Survivor over this, every day of the week. To me, BB-19 is that nasty, artificial, cherry medicinal aftertaste that sticks to the back of my throat, and whenever I think about it, I gag. But I will say something nice. I think the first week is explosive and fun to watch. But then most seasons of Big Brother start off explosive, whatever. BB-19 has a major wild card in Cody having to nominate almost half the house in one week, and it causes a major ruckus. Of course, then a player quits and there's a racism scandal and Paul then strengthens their death grip ever so slowly, but hey, welcome to Big Brother 19. This guy does not give any information out. He's emotionless, doesn't talk. At this point, the toothbrush is making more noise than he is, but I could kind of feel that something's off. It also shed a major light on jury management and how vital it can be. Very clearly, Josh took advantage of this, although here's my big issue. BB-19 is all about Paul and every vote cast was either for or against them. If you're here to watch Big Brother for the strategy, you got one player to look at. There's not much else to go off. I can't say the same for the other four seasons in my bottom five that are all in this video, and yes, I did watch a lot of the live feeds for BB-19. Which then leads me to my most damning remarks. 
The live feeds were the worst I have ever seen. The fights weren't enjoyable, especially when I saw them play out in their entirety. The episodes barely scratched the surface of the vile, toxic nature that was brewing inside that house. And what's worse, nobody came out looking for the better. To me, BB-19 had an ugly narrative from very early on, so much so that Cody was crowned America's favorite despite his buried remarks. And yet, here's the thing. Paul and the minions were just as dislikable. And there were more of them, and they controlled every week, and they were just, ah, they were so unpleasant to watch live on the feeds day in and day out. And if I'm to sit here and claim to be a fan, I'm gonna watch the feeds when I can, and I'm gonna criticize them when they're garbage. We're in a situation where we are literally Damn. attempting to get a man who has killed other human beings to crack. Okay, that's what we're doing right now. That is fucking stupid. This is what we've come to. Yeah. Personally, I prefer not to get to these extremes. Well, I've already broke my foot you in the attempt to win $500,000. I know that Paul is very good at this, okay? But this is a last ditch, this is a last ditch effort. Okay? I agree Because now 100%. we are putting people in physical danger and that's not that cool. I am not sugarcoating my opinions on this season. I truly don't like it. No power shifts, no suspense, no redeemable qualities in my eyes, and I can only wish I had been so lucky to catch this season on a binge. The faster it's over, the better. And no, it is not better than BB-22. Recency bias is not gonna work this time. I literally can't believe that I pulled that off. I pretty much got the one-legged girl to win a foot race. I don't even have to make a joke. Number 20. While BB-19 is by far my least favorite season of all time, forever and ever, it's still fun to think about what even compares to that. And yeah, while BB-19 gets me mad, my second least favorite season just gets me sad. Like Big Sad. It's Big Brother All-Stars. Two. Whoa, I almost forgot to say two there. Big Brother 22 is my second least favorite season thus far, and that is largely because there's just not a lot to like. But unlike BB-19, I'm not mad, just disappointed. I recently made a video review about this season. It's over like a half hour long. It encapsulates my viewing experience pretty well, but when I told you guys in that video that it wasn't my least favorite season, I meant it, and I still do. Again, to quickly rehash what we just watched, no power shifts all season, incredibly predictable. But I do appreciate that there was another all-star season, if only to see a few players return, if only to see some pretty strong gameplay that did result in a lot of success across the board for several players. And one of my favorite last minute evictions with Cody cutting Nicole. It was raw and real, and it gave me a little pep in my step at the last second that I did not see coming. But this is number 20 for a reason. This season, to me, is a slog. There's one fight, one argument, almost no drama. It really feels like the stakes could not be lower. And for an all-star season, that's inexcusable. But I did like some bouts of gameplay, and it was a season of inches and small, very subtle moves that ultimately culminated in one of the most dominant victories we've ever seen. That does have some merit, given we are watching a game. It's just a shame I didn't find it all that exciting compared to the rest of what Big Brother has had to offer over the past 20 years. I mean, come on, you didn't think you could have all-stars without me, did you? We're going to keep them in the dark just a little bit longer. 12 seconds later. It's a triple eviction. No, it's <gasps> Wait, what? What? Oh my God. <gasps> Number 19. Rounding up my bottom three, this is the ceiling as far as seasons I don't like goes. Because even though there are two more seasons in my bottom five, I generally like most Big Brother seasons, but not this bottom three. And number 19, third to last, is Big Brother 13. If you caught my underrated players two-part series, you probably shouldn't be too surprised here. There are a lot of underrated players this season who get robbed. I watched a lot of the live feeds for BB13. It was only the second season I had ever seen live and two straight years of Brandon and Rachel <laughs> was a lot to endure. Not only that, but Jeff and Jordan were not as likable this time around. Evil Dick, arguably the biggest draw this season, leaves halfway into week one, and we get a ton of horrible twists that all work in favor of one side of the house because the deck was stacked from the start. I didn't like the duo's twist, or the golden key twist, or the recruits versus favorites twist, or the blatantly obvious returning player fan vote twist in the middle of the season, or the myriad of Pandora's boxes. Again, we're at the bottom of my rankings. There's a lot of things I don't like about these seasons. 
It was a nightmare to watch live with a blatant disregard for any integrity. I felt dumber for caring about this season, and when it was over, I got mad at myself for caring about a show that had otherwise been a lot of fun to watch. We did get the worst alliance in BB history with the regulators, so there's that. But the gameplay was very one-dimensional across the board. Yes, there was an exciting to watch back and forth power struggle in the middle of the season between Danielle and Kalia going against the vets, and that is largely why I have it ahead of the bottom two. It did have a tinge of unpredictability at times. The pendulum of power did swing. It's just disappointing with how it all came together when I look at the season as a whole. <sighs> Something about it just doesn't feel right. Like a clown missing a shoe. Oh my god. Oh my god, I can't believe I threw it out. Great job. <laughs> I did throw one of those shoes outside of my box. Clown shoe. I think I'm gonna say it over in my head. Clown shoe, clown shoe, clown shoe. Kalia won HOH and then That's uh, my girl. POV. <laughs> Shelly voted me out. Wow. I love my line. That's rad. Number 18. Recency bias is really taking a hit with my bottom five, but can you blame me? I've had the hardest time deciding what goes above my bottom three, but my number 18 is Big Brother 21. And no, unlike my bottom three, BB21 is actually in my I can work with this tier if only because I truly enjoyed the post-jury live feeds and episodes to an extent all the way up until the finale night. The post-jury for BB21 is some of my favorite feeds of any season between the shifting targets week to week to the drama, the Day 44 blow up, Taco Tuesday, the Final Five, agonizing decision between Holly or Tommy. There was a lot to unpack and it was suspenseful and I had a lot to work with and look forward to every Thursday eviction, both because I was almost always happy to see someone of this cast get evicted, but also to see who would win HOH and who they would target. It was very much up in the air, and looking back, it's a little unfortunate that the post-jury was entirely dominated by one alliance. The jackson Holly, cliff nicole alliance, but then I was also rooting for Cliff and Nicole the most, so it kind of worked. I am like... <laughs> this, is, this is ridiculous, Nikki! That was crazy! Oh my god! Good job. Good job. Victory! Vindication! Oh, there you go! Thank you! The ending left me deflated. Unlike BB22, I just didn't care for the finale, knowing it was between Jackson or Holly, knowing Nicole dropped the ball and was already in third, or that Cliff mistakenly fell for Jackson's lie. The post jury was chaotically straightforward, and reading between the lines, knowing the details week to week, moment to moment, definitely got me more invested, and I do think many fans undersell this post jury for just how fun it was, or maybe could have been if it weren't, if it weren't for the pre-jury. Yeah, not exactly a shocker. The pre-jury is why I have this season where I do. I think it is the worst pre-jury in Big Brother history. It's a mess, and not for any good reason. It's a strategic steamroll, and it wasn't enjoyable to watch. Camp comeback just wasn't it. The activity powers were not my jam. And while I don't think the drama was as ugly as what I saw throughout the entirety of Big Brother 19, it still didn't sit right with me. Watching those feeds day to day left a lot to be desired, which is why I'm incredibly thankful, not grateful, for day 44, for the absolute insanity that day provided, where the mega alliance fractured and split the season wide open. A miracle was beset, Jack gets evicted, the rest is history. BB21 is this low, not because I abhor it, but because I like every other season a little more, or a lot more, and it kinda just landed itself here when the dust settled. You didn't throw slip and slide? No! Nick, that's a lie, I gotta be honest, that's a Oh my! God, no, it's not, bro. See, this is the thing. I'm honest about everything I've ever done, and you're not. Manifest you're the truth, bro. Okay. Number 17. This is probably going to be the more controversial season of my bottom five because I've seen a lot of love for it, and I get why. But for me, even though I do enjoy parts of it, 
by the end, I tend to just feel indifference. I don't care that much. It's Big Brother 18. So let me explain, because it almost didn't land here, and I don't think it's a bad season, but it's not one of my favorites, not by a long shot. I think BB-18 starts pretty strong. The four returning players don't have the same skill level or gravitas as the BB-14 coaches, but I kind of like that. It makes them blend in more. Kind of doesn't feel like there's such a divide. The newbies this season hold their own better too. I found the early game compelling with the Paul, Victor, Jose underdog antics kind of fun and the eight pack mega alliance, a pale, weaker imitation of the bomb squad. That's not a bad thing. It made the season more dynamic, the gameplay more fluid, and even though I don't like like the team's dynamic, it actually probably helped a bit as Frank quickly fell from grace but was still saved because his team made him immune. My biggest issue with BB-18 is that the most compelling players who drive the narrative don't even make it past the halfway point in the season. Well, okay, except for maybe Paul. My favorite parts of BB-18 all occur pre-jury. It's like the inverse of Big Brother 21. And they mostly revolve around Day, Tiffany, and Frank. These three players are the core that the season leans into and they all get evicted back to back to back. Not to mention Polly is insufferable for a while and while he does get his comeuppance and that's fun to watch, once he leaves, I felt a strong sense of apathy towards what happens next. I just have never been that invested in Nakori or Jadley and the showmances and I just couldn't take Victor very seriously after he was evicted twice. I liked Paul more here than on BB-19, largely because they are such an underdog and those catchphrases. Well, okay, the catchphrases got old and they got even older on a rewatch. But still, I really enjoy the calamity of the pre-jury. It's a devastating boot order for better and for worse. And I really don't like how Bridget was treated on the feeds or how clicky the house would get. I don't have any favorites to root for by the end of this season. I wasn't really rooting for anyone most of the season, which sometimes can be fun because any outcome is fine. But when I compare it to what the rest of Big Brother has to offer going forward for the rest of the season, in this video series, BB-18 falls short of greatness for me. I needed more scenarios. I just needed more scenarios. Okay, everything is scenarios. We don't know. So we have to find out when that scenario happens. Well, what I'm saying is, why was I was not included in the scenario? Because you were there. This is the thing. Scenarios are scenarios. Somebody else go up, we make a scenario for that. Somebody else go up for that, we make a scenario for that. Because I only can speak the truth and then have people decide. You know, what's the truth you're speaking? Scenarios. I told myself that I would come in here and be emotionless. I tried to play this game as best as I could and I feel like it brought out the worst sides of me. <clears throat> I hate seeing butterflies. So I think better not come near me and try and land on me. Damn butterfly flies by. No one in this house really knows who I am. I've been holding this big secret for a really long time, and I'm just praying that these girls can accept it. I trust them. I, I'm gonna cry. I'm not a childcare worker who's never been to college. I am an aspiring mathematician. My dream is to use prime numbers to fight against hackers for the NSA. So you're mad smart. Okay, with that out of the way, one foot in front of the other, deep breaths, clear eyes, full hearts, probably still gonna lose. Here's my number 16. At the end of part one, I said I was gonna drop a bomb and one of the most polarizing seasons, believe it or not, my number 16 is Big Brother 16. <laughs> Okay, on one hand, I know I've got the diehard super fans in my ear chirping away about how much they despise this season. On the other hand, Big Brother 16 is a lot of people's first seasons of the show. It is casually remembered very well, has a cast that many seem to love, and a winner most respected for the game they played. Some fans dislike the Battle of the Block twist, me included, because it basically crushes the underdogs and encourages big alliances, a staple we have seen in modern Big Brother time and again. 
I didn't watch much of the live feeds for BB-16 due to real life responsibilities at the time, so one of the biggest criticisms, how boring the feeds were for many, never held much water for me. I also just wasn't as invested on that front to sit down and watch them day in and day out as I have been with other seasons, and that's largely why Big Brother 16 is where it's at on my rankings. I think the edited episodes portray the game really well. I recently rewatched this season, and despite knowing the boot order, all the moves, how egregious Battle of the Block would be, because seriously, from a strategic perspective, every single week is literally the exact same thing, nominate the pawns, throw the comp, underdog stand, no chance, I still found myself enjoying the cast and their ridiculous antics enough for me to for sure feel like it's not in the bottom five. Zach is an absolute madman. He causes so much drama, and it's a blast to watch him swing from the chandeliers. Frankie is a beast of a player who just doesn't get enough credit, not even from me. And yeah, you have Derek, one of the slickest players to date. To do what Derek did, to run that many circles around the cast on his first time ever playing is crazy. It is so good. The pre-jury is fun. It holds its own between Joey to Pow Pow to Devin. If you can rewatch Big Brother 16 free of bias, if you don't like the season right now, I do think it's a good ride. Not a great ride, mind you. I think the Caleb and Amber storyline is absolutely atrocious, one of my least favorites in the history of the show. I feel gross watching it, and a rewatch only solidified how creepy it all was. I think Battle of the Block way overstays its welcome, so much so that it, it really is the, one of the main reasons why it's so far down on my rankings. The strategy just becomes so stifled that while it's fun to watch the leader and Derek pull way ahead, there's just not much else to look forward to. Team America is just a lamer version of America's player, and the predictable steamroll boot order, in spite of the drama that was caused week to week, just doesn't provide those power swings I think the best seasons need to have. Make no mistake, Big Brother 16 is nothing if not an absolute steamroll. It's nice the cast was telegenic, and they kind of made it more fun to watch in spite of that, but for me, I need a little more. One Alliance dominating does not make for a great season. Watchable, yes, definitely, sure. But I was left wanting by the end. Zach's just told me everything that I need to know. I know who the weak link in this alliance is, and right now my trust is broken. Powell and Brittany up there, who you voting out? Dude, what, whatever the- No, no, Powell and Brittany up there, who you voting out? I, it doesn't matter to me. I don't, dude, I don't want, I feel like you're, you're like pissing me for something. No, I don't trust you right now. And if you wanna put me on the block, do it. Bro, that didn't Put me even, right that, there. That didn't even and... cross my mind. <laughs> you just said it just now. Okay, well, I'm telling you. I never liked Devin in the first place. He hit me with the first jab. That gives Zach Attack the green light to come back with an uppercut, and I played dirty. I'm going below the belt. You're a huge liar, dude. You called a house meeting, crying over your daughters. I would never compromise my honesty or integrity for any amount of money. And you do just that every single day since. Perfect, dude. Number 15. I swear I'm not doing this on purpose, but my number 15 Big Brother season is Big Brother 14. No, I'm kidding. It's 15. It's Big Brother 15. BB14 is next. Real talk. This whole list is just a lesson in counting backwards. Yeah. Okay. So my number 15 season is Big Brother 15 and BB15 gets a lot of crap. Deservedly so. The biggest cardinal sin to me with this season is that, to be frank, the cast overall is not charming. In spite of the ugly parts, there aren't any fan favorites to redeem them. I see why Alyssa won the fan favorite award, but some of her diary rooms were so cringy and scripted, it blew my mind. I look at Big Brother 15 and I just feel like it's a shame because I think it could have been higher, it could have been more well received. It's deservingly not, but it had all of the ingredients to be a better season. I think it's one of the most ferocious newbie casts in 20 years. This cast played hard and flipped the game often, and there were numerous factions operating all season that really compelled me to follow along with them. The moving company, the counter alliance with Amanda weaponizing Alyssa, you have Helen doing her own thing, you have the 3AM alliance, the exterminators who were like the broken toys nobody cared about, seizing the day at the end, you had Macranda just dropping bombs every episode, you had the horrible little stains of Jeremy and Caitlin and the lot, basically the popular kids in high school who were all left out in the cold to get picked off pre-jury. Because, make no mistake, the outright racism on BB15 is intolerable. 
It's gross. There's no mincing of words, no denying how horrible it is, how bad the situation is when you have a vote between Howard and Candace at the hands of Aaron, how weird it feels to see them become pariahs, how the producers had to start putting disclaimers up at the top of every episode. That was not fun to watch. And that is why I have this season low on my rankings. On top of the not so telegenic cast, on top of the horrible edit that really screws over a great player like Andy, I have said this before, but Andy is the most under-edited winner in Big Brother history, and when a fan doesn't give him his dues, I kind of understand why. He is, in my opinion, one of the best, but it also tells me they probably didn't look beneath the surface because Andy doesn't get a scene on the show as the eventual winner until, wait for it, until week five. Five weeks of game, five weeks of episodes, and Andy doesn't get a single scene. The hammock is a place where I get my deepest thinking done. I reminisce about home. I try to strategize just with myself and figure out where my place is in this game. It is a place of zen. Oop. I rewatched Big Brother 15 trying to keep track of his game and he is, he's literally not there. And it's the first time in Big Brother history that the eventual winner is so shafted, so overlooked. And it continues with Steve in Big Brother 17 and even a bit with Nicole in the first half of 18. And that also brings the season down in my eyes. It focuses too hard on Macranda, on the unlikable Jeremy, Aaron, Caitlin, Gina Marie squad and the drama they're bringing on Alyssa being Rachel's sister and being given a power every week for just that. But there's a lot of drama and fighting and the players really want to win. Nobody is rolling over and dying. Judd gets brutally blindsided in the first double and I was floored. I will, I will never forget that. That is one of my most shocking moments ever. Andy pulling a rabbit out of a hat in the second double to get Alyssa evicted by McRae is just, it's another one. Double evictions rarely serve, but BB15 gave us two of them. It's not too late. Don't vote how people are telling you. Vote how you want to. And you too. Please change your vote, and you two change your vote. You change your vote, and I'll be working hard with you guys. I won't be working against you guys. Not everything you hear is true. We all know that. Thanks. And if there was ever a reason to revisit this season, it's for that. It's for the drive this newbie cast had to win, and I respect that. I need that more often. Number 14. We got some hot takes and hot cakes, and this one is another spicy season that is way overlooked and underappreciated. My number 14 is, <laughs> oh boy, I gotta pause for a minute. It's Big Brother 9, till death do us part. Finally, Peridium, oh my God, I was scared you're gonna put that in like your top five. What took you so long, man? I used to despise this season before I was a super fan of the show, and then I dropped my pretense and rewatched it and took it at face value and have been learning to love the absolute shit show of a season just a little bit more. Not a lot more, not a lot more, but enough to not have it in my like default bottom five. The stock argument against BB9 is that the winner got arrested after the season and yeah, he did for selling drugs. But that doesn't happen in the season, and what's more, Adam has turned his life around and now uses his time for good. Seriously, Google him. Nice to know. Adam's a weird guy, but his facial reactions all season just had me absolutely cracking up, I think more than probably anyone in the history of the show. The way he responded to people, just his default setting, was so cartoony. I've yet to see it replicated by anyone. He is unique and doesn't seem like a bad guy at all despite his postseason reputation. Who said all the damn baby food out here, bro? I like it and all, but not that much. I mean, is that my mother saying? Tell her I need to talk to her immediately because she didn't do a good job at all. I, I mean, it's good for you. It's healthy. I like the banana one. That's about it. And the, and the, and the vanilla custard is all right, too. Okay, but if you don't like Adam, that's understandable. I get it. Sheila. Sheila is an underrated gem of a player. She brings a lot of heated gameplay and drama to the show, and she is the beating heart of the season. I walked away from Big Brother 9 wishing she had played a second time. And it's the arc with these two players from day one where they're at each other's throats to the very last week where they almost reach final two that makes me enjoy the season more. It's not the prettiest, smoothest road to get there, but it's not often such a story comes together between two very unlikely individuals and it wasn't a showmance. Now there was a lot of ugly drama this season. I think the most horrendous remark 
ever said on the show was uttered here by Joshua regarding Amanda. Combine that with Ryan's views on interracial relationships or Natalie creepily obsessing over Matt or the guinea pig fiasco at the Final Four HOH against Sharon. There's a really weird amount of guinea pig scenes throughout Big Brother 9. It really is kind of funny how Sharon has a scene. She pretty much gets her only sole scene of the entire season about her sitting down and talking about how much she likes the guinea pigs. Yeah. I love my little friend. See, your mama takes care of you, friend. I feed my friend before I even brush my teeth in the morning. I love the friend. Everyone knows Jacob and Sharon and Ryan and Jen were two pre-existing relationships in the Big Brother house, but there is a third pre-existing relationship still in the house. The correct answer is fact. You okay, really, Ferenc. You really do have to <laughs> I really don't like the duo's twist here. Same with Big Brother 13, and I hope it never, ever returns. But I will say, if you go into Big Brother 9 knowing all hope is lost, you may find there is still something there to be savored. For example, while I really don't care for the trashiness, we only got one argument, one fight, on Big Brother 22. One major disagreement. I went back and counted how many fights happened on Big Brother 9, and by the end of this season, there were over 25. We had a house meeting on night one and two house meetings by day four. If you shift your mentality to just kicking back and watching the fireworks, BB9 is drama personified within the context of a game. And while we do lose some potentially decent players pre-jury, like Jacob, I'm beyond crying over spilled milk by this point. The post-jury is much more gameplay oriented than people like to give it credit for. Once the duo twist ends and we get some fun backstabs, blindsides, and strategic positioning all season. It's a highly underrated series of moves between both sides of the split house, Sheila in the middle, and a sense of anything can happen with each new HOH. You just don't get that very very often with Big Brother, and it's a shame the duo's twist wiped out half the house. It's a shame there were a few bad apples in the cast that ruined the bunch, but I think overall, Big Brother 9 is underrated. Compared to the rest of Old School Big Brother, yeah, it's, it's my least favorite, but that's clearly saying a lot. Number 13. Nostalgia be damned. It's Big Brother 12. Not even hiding from this one, BB12 was the first season I ever watched and thus has a special place in my geeky little super fan heart. I do hear a lot of the criticisms for the season. It is very, very predictable and I agree. It is. Both on paper and while watching the show, even when I had never seen Big Brother before and was watching season 12 live, I knew pretty much exactly what was going to happen every week, barring like maybe a minor hiccup or two, and the suspense never left me hanging. So when I see people rank Big Brother 12 low, I don't mind, even though I have it right in the middle. And then conversely, when people rank it pretty high, I get it. I love the season too. I really like the cast this season. I think most of them pop in some way. They have great diary room confessionals. They were funny, charismatic. I was charmed by this group, so much so that I watched the feeds every day, even though I knew nothing too wild was ever going to happen. It was kind of like hanging out with some close friends, watching Hayden and Reagan and Brittany host Just the Tip late at night, or listening to Enzo crack jokes about his bizarre lifestyle, or Lane being Lane. You had Matt, who never took anything too serious, and I appreciated that. Or even Rachel and Brendan, who were lightning rods for drama. They wielded no power, and it was kind of nice to see the antagonistic forces have no say in the matter, because a bigger, much more impressive game was being played around them. The Brigade ran this season, and for some ran it into the ground, and it was a sight to behold. I didn't realize at the time just how impressive their strategy would be, how easily they finessed everyone every week without even needing to win every HOH. When you control the votes, you control the game. You have parachute alliances on the side. It was, it was brilliant. That's the beast, the beast, the animal, the brains, the meow meow. You know what I mean? What's, what's the name of the squad, the name of the team? Like I thought the brigade, yeah, what a brigade, brigade bro. You down with that? I like it. Beast. Brigade. Animal. The brains. The meow meow. It's like we're, we're like the 18. It goes against my greatest instincts right now to say that I trust anybody, but I do. 
Uh, I got this gut feeling that, that these guys got my back. I'm gonna venture to say we are the strongest alliance in Big Brother history. I also think Big Brother 12 has a fun batch of edited episodes. I think it may be one of the better ones in that regard because the feeds didn't have much to write home about, yet the episodes kept me entertained regardless. I mean, the feeds did too, but that was because it was my first time watching them. I was blown away by the concept of just being able to watch a social strategic game live 24 seven. I distinctly remember most fans at the time online groaning about about how much these were just the worst feeds ever. And I was like, damn, if this is as bad as it gets, consider me lucky, I'm not making popcorn. So, okay, like I said, it is the nostalgia for me. And I think Big Brother 12 is a middle of the road season, not too hot, not too cold, just decent enough to be acceptable. Oh no, the spider. Kristen picks up a spider, nasty, nasty. Oh, oh, there no. it is. <laughs> Necessary, gross, disgusting, I'm horrified. Kristen just ate a spider. <laughs> this was my first spider that I've ever eaten. I don't like things going to waste, so I decided to eat it. Number 12. I think this next season may be one of the most underrated, if only because I usually see it ranked low, sometimes even bottom five. I don't get it. I just, I don't get it. It's Big Brother 11. As far as the bad goes, I consider the coup d'etat a really, really, really dumb twist that completely changes the course of the season. It's completely not earned. I don't support it only because it's way too overpowered and the way that it's doled out bothers me. America feels gluttonous this season and the coup is a plump Christmas ham. I also don't care much for the clicks, like Big Brother 18 except this time high school themed because that's what we want to see. And why not bring back all four returning players instead of just one? I would love, love to see Jessica or Brian or even Cowboy back. Jesse was the player I wanted to see least of those four, so go figure he returns and then runs the game for the pre-jury. Like Big Brother 15, I don't think Big Brother 11's cast is very very likable. There's a lot of ugly drama, some off-color remarks, and I just, I don't think anyone comes out looking better for it. But at the same time, I do enjoy a good split house dynamic, especially with blurred lines here and there, such as Ronnie getting outed as a rat, or Russell losing his mind with every player, or even the cutesy moments between Jeff and Jordan. It was endearing, at least this season, and a nice reprieve amidst the gloom and doom, like when the women turned into a, <laughs> when the women turned into a morning mess over Jesse getting evicted. Unintentional a little funny. This is redonkulous. Please, girls, the guy was an idiot. Why are you crying over him? Ugh. So good to me. And do you know he like prayed for all of us all the time? We see Kevin and Natalie finesse Jeff and Russell at the final six. Ugh, love it. Kevin almost nabs the win until Jordan shows up like out of left field. I consistently found myself entertained with Big Brother 11 week by week. And while it doesn't have the strongest cast of players, they do fight hard and sloppy. And there are some big moves and exciting bouts of tension and suspense. And I think it culminates in a season regularly overlooked. You could be any animal in the whole world and you'd be a squirrel. What's wrong with the squirrel? They hang out in neighborhoods and stuff. A squirrel? Yeah. What kind of aspirations do you have for yourself? I get to wear a banana suit for a week. I get to wear a banana suit for a week. Hooray. Looks like a big pencil. Yeah. It does. Yeah. It could have been worse. I could also not be in a banana suit. I'm a man in a banana suit. Man in a banana suit. Banana suit at night, banana suit all day. Banana suit at work, banana suit at work. Man in a banana suit. Number 11. With a season smack dab in the middle of everything, not in my top 10 or in my bottom 10, it's just sort of floating out there in the ether. My number 11 is Big Brother, it's Big Brother 8. 
BB-8, oh boy, we got a lot to say with this one, and I find it particularly fitting that it's in the middle because I am quite divided on how to feel about it. The Donato storyline is the beating heart of the season. They inject a ton of magic and chaos and underdog storylines, and then also being on top, Dick is wild, he's all over the place. He causes a ruckus and just doesn't hold back and doesn't care, and there's something to that attitude that's compelling. It's not often you see this on Big Brother, like a man with nothing to lose except for, of course, his relationship with his daughter. A while ago, I said BB-8 is one of the better seasons to show someone if they want to get into Big Brother, and I sort of still maintain that idea, although to a lesser degree. Check out Big Brother 20, honestly. But I think the conclusion to BB-8 is just its reality TV catharsis, especially if you're new to the show. It's something you just don't often see. A lot of heart and gameplay and drama, and all of that is why I have this season so high. That said, <laughs> The cast of Big Brother 8 outside of the Donatos is also, it's actually, they're actually really great. It's a high energy group with some strong players who care just as much about winning and they try just as hard. Jen is a goldmine of unintended comedy. She is, she is so much fun to pay attention to on a rewatch. And in many ways, I was rooting for like half this cast to succeed in spite of the Donatos roller coaster of a narrative. Because, okay. That's also my biggest issue, and that's kind of why I have it smack dab in the middle. The first time I watched Big Brother 8, I was blown away. I just, I couldn't believe someone like Dick won. The journey to get there, the craziness of the cast, and how they almost let him walk all over them. But then I rewatched the season, and I rewatched the season again, and I dug a little deeper, and I realized I didn't like the underbelly of this beast at all. America's player is too overpowered of a twist and it, it dominated the direction the season went. Dick and Danielle turn on their alliance because of Eric, because of America and the hinky votes. Then Dick is saved at the final nine because of America. Then Danielle is saved at the final seven because of America. By the end of it, I was just quite displeased with how I couldn't trust the story in front of me, how I couldn't invest in the gameplay as much as a regular season on these rewatches because it felt like I was watching a bizarro timeline, how amusing it was to see Dick come to the same conclusion the moment America's player is revealed at the finale. The moment Julie Chen reveals that Eric was actually doing a lot of the heavy lifting for him, the moment he realizes that like half of his game was dictated by a deus ex machina, it's, it's a sight to behold. I thought I made a great power play in the game and it turns out that it's just everybody watching that uh, kept me in the house and sent Dustin packing. Eric, what do you have to say for yourself? Well, the first thing I want to say is Dustin, Amber, I would have never done it. You have to take it up with 10 million fans, not me. I wanted you guys to be there, and I'm sorry, and you'll see it when you watch the show. But look, the season's not in my bottom 10. I can't ignore that it still did happen. Somewhat naturally in between the twist, it wasn't all Eric, it wasn't all the Donatos, and hey, sometimes it's just kinda nice to not think too hard and appreciate a good story, with an asterisk. Even if there are plot holes, no thinking. One step at a time, we're getting closer and closer and closer. And all I can do is hope that um, things continue on those lines. Number 10. Oh my God, we're in the top 10. Had to step on a lot of toes to get here, but whew, it's a beeline to the end. I genuinely love every season in my top 10. And many times I swapped this order around before finalizing the video. I could switch it around right now, depending on my mood, but nonetheless, my number 10 favorite season of Big Brother is Big Brother 5. I really like BB5 and I'm potentially underselling it, but regardless, Drew is the most underrated winner in my opinion. While he's incredibly boring to watch most of the time, he talks at like 0.25 speed and really gives me nothing as far as characterization goes, I can't deny this cast is, is the, just like Big Brother 8, just like the rest of the seasons that are gonna be coming up, they're a strong group of players. Drew. Diane, Nokomis, Karen, Marvin. Can we talk about Marvin? The man made a move on Drew's showmance in front of Cowboy, knowing Cowboy would snitch and unintentionally drive a wedge between the two strongest players, and it happened. And it kinda worked. You got the Four Horsemen, an incredibly overbearing, condescending bunch with Jace and Scott, who are fantastic early season villains. They control the narrative until the wheels fall off around the jury, and it's such a sweet comeuppance. Jace is perhaps the worst day of anyone in Big Brother history when he gets into a fight with Adria, then Scott gets evicted, and then it turns out Adria has an identical twin. 
and her name isn't Holly. Jace is fantastic. I find him so fun to watch and root against. But then you also get like the first fast forward week or the six finger plan, the first backdoor ever. And it's a thing of beauty. You get Diane playing an aggressive game almost all season, despite also being very vulnerable as a human, very dynamic, despite dropping the ball in the end game and choosing Drew over Nokomis and Karen low key. She was kind of screwed either way. You also have Project DNA with uh, Nokomis and Kalbi, which was like a two episode thing, okay. But you also had the identical twins who were fun to watch up until they, well, up until they weren't, but then they were fun to watch get evicted. Carmen Electra, anyone? It's a boomerang brand. BB5 is so often overlooked. It's one of the most complete seasons from start to finish with a healthy amount of action week to week. I do think the early game is a bit, eh. And I'm not as in love with the cast from a character perspective, even though I just gushed about a lot of them, as much as I am with the following nine seasons. But overall, I like Big Brother 5 a lot, and I think it deserves more love. It's more than just like a it happened season, as I often see it said to be. It's Holly. It's you. It's Holly. It's Holly. It's Holly. It's, it's Holly. Holly. Yeah, it's Holly. It's Holly. Please be Holly. Holly. No, it's not. It's what? Oh! Number nine, you know, I hate to do it because I see these two seasons so often back to back. They're actually back to back in the audience rankings and I'm always amused by how that happens. But then I went and you know what? I did it myself. My number nine is Big Brother 4. Yes, I put Big Brother 5 and Big Brother 4 next to each other, but I love Big Brother 4. June and Allison are my favorite final two in the history of the show, and truth be told, they largely carry this season for me, but damn it, a season where there's a clear house divide, two sides, and then there's two strong women in the middle who are both incredibly strategic and cunning and have no loyalty to anyone but themselves, and then they team up halfway in despite targeting each other for a little bit and then realize they are their own best bets and just lay waste to the boot order, ultimately culminating in them being the final two. I have said it before, but it's not often you get the two best players of the season in the final two, and we got it here. To me, the best seasons need that pendulum of power to swing week to week. And that literally happens every week in BB4. Both sides of the house trade power with a healthy dose of interplay and friendly rivalries and suspense over what's gonna happen. You have strongish players like Justin or Erica or even G, ish. BB4 is not the strongest bunch of players, and it kind of feels like an early 2000s MTV stunt casted show. It's it's a different vibe from BB2 or BB3, but I'm okay with the X Factor twist. It's not perfect. I think it would have been better to have the entire cast on an equal playing field. Really, I, I just wanted Jack's ex-girlfriend from high school from like 30 years ago in the house, you know, just to see what happens next. But to have the big alliance smashed early, to have some hilarious blindsides like with Michelle getting evicted in the Stooges, sorry, the dream team not expecting it. When Allison manipulates Nate to use the veto on her, then he gets evicted the following week and she's like, whoops. How June has this season on lock with her perspective on the game. She's cunning from the very beginning and she knows it and she owns it. And it's so satisfying to see players be ruthless and be okay with it. Even if like, you know, the rest of the jury wasn't. There's also a fair amount of unintended comedy, which I love, like with G's haircut or Robert's constant meltdowns over peanut butter and jelly. Some of my favorite scenes in all of Big Brother are on BB4. The ending does slow down to a crawl, unfortunately. Teething problems. The show is, you know, trying to figure out its format, and the final few episodes really have nothing to show for it. They hire a mime to troll Allison. So, there's that. Oh my god! Get away from me! You better not. I would rather have Dana in the house than that stupid mime. But either way, I'm a fan of BB4. It's in my top 10, and let's keep going. Number eight, two words. Who flipped? Ah! had a vision. Big Brother 20 is my number eight, and to me it's a testament that modern Big Brother can be fantastic, both on the feeds 
and in the episodes, regardless of the current meta we find the show in. Again, a split house makes for a fun season. Level six versus Faute, the hive, the constant blindsides and the vote flips, and then asking the most important question of all, who flipped? Fessy's still trying to find out. BB20 has a great cast of likable players who all played hard, even if they didn't all play very well. Some of them didn't, I think. I talked earlier about the pendulum of power swinging back and forth, and what I particularly loved about BB20 was how the pendulum swung, but it also kind of didn't. Yeah, level six lost two of their four members in the pre-jury, but they also dictated who was going and they made lemonade out of lemons. They confused half the house every week to the point where being in power wasn't solely relegated to winning HOH, to winning the competitions. Holding power was all about the flow of information, who you appeared to ally yourself with. Tyler flips Caitlyn, bonds with Scotty, Brett gets close to JC, or Rachel gets info from Bailey. Level 6 is one of the strongest alliances, and for good reason. Mind you, they weren't perfect, but BB20 is largely about them dissecting the cast week by week to get to the end. But, okay, you need an opposition to complete the recipe of a good season, and for many, Faute were the main characters who just kinda got outplayed. But for me, and again, what I love so much about this season is that despite them holding all the power, they were just as fun to watch because they didn't know exactly what to do with it. That made for such a compelling narrative. When I watched BB20 live, I was compelled to watch both sides equally, and I was rooting for a mishmash of both sides in the endgame so we could see this dynamic play out as long as possible. Blindside after blindside, huge shocking revelations, betrayals, quick slick moves that almost had me putting Big Brother 20 in my top five, top three, potentially, potentially at number one. And then it all kind of fell apart. If you check my worst twist video from last year, you will know what I mean. I think the hacker twist totally derails this season, particularly in week seven when Rockstar goes on Haley's HOH. I despise twists sending out players on their allies HOH. Yeah, Rockstar done goofed in that OTEV, but you know, she never should have been in the crossfire. And while Fessy's HOH where he took out Scotty was wild, <laughs> I will never forget on the live feeds that long pause in the HOH room before Brett raised his hand to implicate himself attempting to paint Scotty as a liar even though Brett was lying. For me, the moment Scotty loses that veto on that week, I noticed the season really, really slows down. It was like the suspense just got sucked up. Casey, Tyler, and Angela went out the rest of the way, and the magic of the first 60% of the season, maybe even 75% of it, just disappears. And I think people over-exaggerate how bad of an end it was. It's not a terrible end or anything, but the highs of the first half were so high. They really set the bar so high, and they're largely what puts this season so high in the first place, at least top eight, if not higher, on a different day. I love BB20. I still think it finishes the last few weeks of the season in a decent place, but my top seven gave me more to work with. I'm not gonna cry. Why the f is this rich boy calling me out? I'm just out here trying to like make some money for my family. The more you cry, the more I want you out of the game, to be honest. That's cute. That's real cute. Like, why don't you go like my I mean, like. <laughs> I promise you I will win the mental warfare and you will end crying and I won't. Oh, my daughter's birthday. Number seven. Speaking of more people to work with, why not double the trouble? Ready for some blood, people? Twin Twist 2.0. It's Big Brother 17. Of the more modern seasons, BB17 is my favorite. A fun cast, complex gameplay, lots of big moves and big swings, players who weren't afraid but also stood their ground. You had favorites such as Johnny Mac and his ridiculous laugh. You had Vanessa, one of the greatest game players of all time. You had fan favorite James the Prankster before it got old or Austin or Judas or whatever that top hat was. The Aust twins were a source of just unintentional comedy and they all kind of trip over each other as they're rearing into that final lap. Steve, the winner, a calculated super fan who was the blind spot many didn't see coming, including myself, to be honest. And that's just the latter half of the season. Never mind, we had some fun early game players like Clelly, a two-headed monster of a dragon, or, or was it a lion? Jason, who returned for OTT. Jason is underrated here. He brought a lot to the show. I see why they brought him back. Day's first appearance, who also brought a lot in those two weeks she was there, and heck, you know what, even Jace, the first boot, he gave me something to work with, something to laugh at. 
Meg the grandma, Becky got hit by a train, and Jackie was taken out too soon. Ah, oh, too soon. Steve got the better of her. Oh yeah, and uh, Jeff swayed his arms. And Audrey, who is such a lightning rod, a hot mess, especially under that blanket. It gets hot under there, but hey, it's better to flame out than fade away. That's not how it goes, but still... I just want to say I really appreciate what this cast brought to the show. Because I just listed the entire cast. Because I love the entire cast. I really do. It may be my favorite. It's full of larger-than-life personalities who all pop, people to root for and against, complex personalities, and the early weeks had some of the most frantic feeds I can remember. So many alliances, so many mixed wires, so much turmoil and calamity, and I'm so thankful that Battle of the Block didn't ruin what otherwise turned out to be a lot of fun. It did didn't overstay its welcome, although, to be honest, I kind of just wish it didn't exist at all. Mind you, it did lead to some early game ping-ponging of HOHs, but you know what? The chaos was real. Between Day getting taken out, to Jeff just getting sniped by Vanessa, to Audrey hanging by a thread, to Liz somehow winning a competition all on her own that saved Austin, Vanessa survives a back door and eventually pulls off another great move with her misting of Julia at the final six. Austin gets blindsided barefoot barefoot. Victims, aren't we all? The Scamper Squad control most of the season, but the seas are never, ever smooth. And if I'm gonna watch a group of people rock the boat for 98 days, give me this crew. I would love to see this season play out one more time. As a human being, I've always been conflicted. I think that life is meaningless and important at the same time. It's meaningless because we're all gonna die, but it's important because we're living, we can love, so why are you guys on the block? You're victims just like I am. But unfortunately in life, victims aren't we all. So I have to say. I'm really sorry, but I came here to play a game and it's a game decision. I'm sorry. Austin, I vote to evict you. Good luck, Austin. Number six. Just shy of my top five, I have had a tough debate with myself about this one. Really, I've had a tough debate with my entire top 10, but I gotta lock it in at some point. And so you know what? It's a Thursday, here we are, let's go. My number six favorite season is Big Brother Deuce. It's two, Big Brother two, the first one, the original, the one after the, uh, after technically after the first one, it's the second one. So why is it not in my top five? Well, to be frank, the lack of a veto comp makes it radically different from any other season. Doesn't make it worse or lesser, but it drastically slows the season down to a crawl, like a repeated set of speed bumps every other episode, and sometimes not everyone is as interesting to follow as I would like them to be. Mind you, it is top six, and to be honest, for a while it was almost pretty much my top five, potentially even top four. It's a great season, pretty um seal of approval. If it's, if it's your number one, I get it, and I get you. The first week ever in the game of Big Brother starts off with a blindside. The pawn goes home and the eventual winner of All Stars is left stunned. Dr. Will is stunned. You're telling me Nicole is an underrated, 12 days to work with, and BB2? BB2 is ready. What BB2 does so well is its character pieces. We learn about every player. Everyone is three-dimensional, fully realized. And that's something Old School Big Brother does well. It gets us to care about the pieces on the board beyond just their strategy. The difficulty here translating it to modern times is that I think most fans don't care as much about that stuff these days because it's more about the logistics of the strategy now than it is the emotions and the motives that fuel the strategy. There's just less to work with on a strategic level with Big Brother 2, and that sort of pales in comparison to what we get today, so if it's not your cup of tea for that reason, fair play. But for me, it delivers. Chilltown versus the other people versus Top, Hardy versus Shannon, Kent versus Hardy, Nicole backstabbing Krista and Monica, or Will backstabbing Hardy and Nicole right after. Every step of the season, there is something to latch onto and keep me invested. This is a top-heavy cast who set the stage well for what the show and the game would come to be. Never mind you have Dr. Will, arguably the greatest player of all time, winning in the first game ever in a manner we have yet to see repeated and likely, honestly, 
we'll never see repeated. Or Nicole, the first runner-up, one of the most underrated players ever. Bunky has a great arc, being a gay man afraid to speak up. He shouldn't be, but he is, and it's understandable, who ends up befriending Kent, a man who just doesn't understand him at all. Or how the final three were impacted by 9-11 at the time, because they were in the house as it happened, particularly Monica. It's not Frankie Grande's sister's concert, but it's something. Despite its pace and low budget, and not being in my top five, BB2 is still worth its weight, and I'm forever thankful it's existed as the first season of Big Brother. When we came in this house that first night, it was all smiles. Everyone held up a glass, we put some champagne in it, and we had a toast for the establishment of friendship on a firmer and more lasting basis. Did you all do that? Look around the room. You all need to learn to love each other, and we need to all get along a lot better. What was the deal with Will's speech? Just when I think America's choice can't go any worse, uh, something like this happens, and you totally redeem yourself! We got a trampoline! Thank you, America! I am ready to jump on the trampoline! Trampoline, trampoline, trampoline! I want to thank America for not giving us new grass. New trampoline. New trampoline. Number five. Overrated. Underrated. Who's to say? My fifth favorite Big Brother season is Big Brother 14. And to be frank, it's here for one reason. Big Brother 14 is here because it is the season that I truly became locked and loaded and sold on the magic that is, or can be, the experience of loving Big Brother. I don't love or even like every season, but BB14 made me a super fan, and maybe that was inevitable given I was already a huge fan of Survivor, but between the preseason hype and speculation, to seeing my two favorite players entering the house, to the daily live feeds and the crazy journey and eventual collision course the season happened upon, for me, BB14 will hold the most special place in my heart of any season. Mind you, it's not my favorite, but it does still have that sentimental value. Going into BB14, my top two favorites were Brittany from season 12, because 12 was my first season, and I was rooting for Brit to somehow squeak out a win over the dominant Brigade Alliance, and then Dan, because he's Dan. I loved BB10, and Dan was a huge reason for that. The calm in the storm, the, the tactical mastermind, a super fan who recognized that Big Brother is both a game and a show. Don't waste the opportunity to bring the audience in with you. I vividly recall Dan's funeral on the feeds, the feeling leading up to him leaving the have not room, to him telling feeders to ping his wife and tell her he's thinking about her. I remember where I was in real life when it happened. Amusingly, I was staying at a friend's house near Ian's University in New Orleans. The funeral was over the top, but you know what? That's half the magic. It's half the show, and without the flair, it's just not as memorable. Although some people may look at 24 hours of solitary confinement as a punishment, to me it's a blessing in disguise. So when I'm in solitary confinement, the only thing I'm gonna be doing is thinking how to get myself out of this mess and who I can stab along the way. How am I gonna spin my way out of this one? Got 24 hours to think about it. While I was trapped in solitary confinement, I came up with a master plan to try and save myself. Step one, invite all the house guests to Dan's funeral. In this game, you'll never earn my trust back. You know what you did. And in this game, you're dead to me. Step two, go talk to Frank and blow up the quack pack. And yes, it's top five. I don't love everything about Big Brother 14. I think Jody was totally screwed. The coach's twist is unnecessarily convenient. Just stick them in the house as players from the get-go. I think the reset button week is just a little too questionable. Couldn't lose Frank that easy, could ya? I think the newbie cast, outside of maybe Ian and Frank, doesn't compare as well to the coaches as players or TV personalities. And I kind of wish there were a stronger opposition to the quack pack than just Frank being a tank and winning every other competition. I mean, it made for a fantastic underdog story, but it did leave something to be desired from a gameplay standpoint. That said, Frank brought the heat and put the dominant alliance in peril. It was not smooth sailing, and I appreciate that. 
I wasn't rooting for Frank at all, but I need my favorites to feel the pressure, and he brought it. I was also a big fan of Janelle going into the season. She's probably my top five, but, you know, she disappointingly left early. I don't blame the new players for doing that. Her reputation was just too grand to ignore. And then Boogie basically lived as a grumpy middle-aged man yearning for a friend. Not sure he found many. Ian was a lovable underdog too, despite winning a lot of comps and being in the dominant alliance. But he kind of wasn't in the dominant alliance when you think about it. He was the fifth wheel, was targeted several times by his own alliance, but he will be the first to say luck is a huge factor in winning. And hey, for me, if it couldn't be Dan and it wasn't going to be Brittany thanks to the funeral, I will happily take an Ian win. I was rooting for him almost as much as Dan, and it was a weird feeling seeing my ideal final two reach the final two, and then sort of being disappointed because I was rooting for Dan just a little bit more. In the grand scheme of the series, BB14 is the final season that doesn't become elongated. It's a perfect 30 episodes that never slows down. You even have drama and tension in the final three. You have Russell Hans's brother flaming out so hard in the first week. You have Frank versus Ian, which is one of my favorite fights ever. You have the Janelle backdoor, the Silent Six falling apart as quickly as it started. Dan squirming to take out Ian every other round. Or of course, or of course, the funeral. I mean, come on. Or or Shane's blindside, or Ian taking Dan to the final two, or the final two speeches where both players wanted to win so damn bad. Oh yeah, and of course there's Daniel Murphy, who's basically like a prototype of Raven. She may even be more than what Raven was. I will never forget my experience watching this season live, and that is why it's in my top five. And when people think it shouldn't be this high, well, I understand. I get it. I'm acknowledging it, but I give it credit for keeping me hooked every step of the way, for getting to see my top two, arguably my top three favorites, come back and giving me a reason to really love the game and the show after not enjoying much of the season prior. BB14 is my season with that personalized, just extra X Factor ingredient. I think all super fans kind of have one or two of those seasons. I'm so glad it exists. This week, I masterminded your demise. I learned from one of the best, and that is why you're sitting with me right now. I'm really sorry. Number four. Whew, okay. That was a lot. BB14 is my number five. Let's keep this next one short and sweet. My fourth favorite season is so good. Oh, it's just so good. And you, the audience, knew it was going to be top five, and you guys all had it even higher than I do. Oh, it's Big Brother. It's Big Brother 7 All Stars. The first All Stars with All-Stars. What's the downside to this season? Well, kind of like Big Brother 14, it is mostly dominated by a few players, particularly Chilltown and the Seasick Alliance, the remnants of the Soft Six from Season 6. The pre-jury is a bit of a routing. A lot of drama goes down, lots of exciting moves are made, particularly Will versus Jace, where James burns Jace, Will tells everyone he hates them, and then Chicken George is just suddenly a comp beast. You have the intrigue of Janelle being such a big target, but winning HOH and winning HOH in week one, and potentially getting evicted if the the noms weren't finalized due to a twist, Allison is like hiding in a giant urn, you have the sheer star factor of all these players returning, seeing them one more time for an all-star game. Were they all stars? Probably not, but I would say most were. And even then, I think the cast knew how to put on a show, something I can't say for every other returning player season. You had Boogie, brute forcing the Howie eviction. You had Will, puppeteering Janelle. You had James turning on his old alliance because they burned him. You had Danielle, finally putting a stop to the madness that was an entire month of one alliance winning every single HOH. Fantastic rivalries with tension and drama. Fantastic gameplay where Chilltown curry favor with Danielle to turn on Janelle and get out Marcellus, only to then flip the following week by carrying favor with Janelle to turn on Danielle and get out James. I'm pretty sure Dr. Will wins this season if he doesn't fracture his thumb at the Final Five veto. Or, of course, if he had kept a closer watch between Janelle and Erica at the Final Four. He was that close to being a two-time winner. And then, of course, you have Janelle. You got Janelle. How can you not talk about Janelle? Janelle was such, such a star. Set the competition record, fought her way to the Final Three, and again, was this close to being in the winner's circle. What could have been for these two? Not everyone gets to take center stage, a real shame about seasons four and five, but hey, I can't say I think less of anyone after Big Brother 7, and that's an aspect I've put a lot of stock into with grading all-star seasons as of late. Not all that glitters is gold, but the stars really came out to shine with this one. 
I'm not clairvoyant, but I know Mike Boogie pretty well, and I realized he was gobbling up as many prizes as he could. Did someone sacrifice points to win $5,000 in cash? Yes! Listen, money can't buy you love, but money can buy you stuff, and I love stuff! I'm surrounded with people who don't understand the game. I'm completely alone. I'm so pissed off. Danielle was gunning for me to get out of this house, and I think that her worst nightmare just happened. Oops, too bad, so sad. I'm gonna be here another week. Number three. Unlike BB7, I have made two whole videos breaking down my third favorite season and really focusing on the soul of it, and that's Big Brother 3 and the fantastic secret alliance between Danielle and Jason. I am a big proponent of BB3, not so much the mastermind losing in the end, although that seems to be a recurring factor with my top five thus far. I love how everyone in this cast, barring maybe Tanya, fit into the story, into the narrative, into the overarching week-to-week -week plot so well. And unlike BB2, it does have a veto, and it does speed up the game a little more. But regardless of that, it is such a strong cast. I think the best seasons need a good cast, and I just, I can't not think about how everyone, again barring one person, has a part to play. Lisa's the understudy, the princess of darkness, Danielle and Jason are the secret good cop, bad cop duo, masterminding everything behind the scenes. Amy is the comic relief, who's also really messy, she's the bunny of the house. You have Marcellus, who's profound and is really trying to find meaning in the house, and then gets totally blindsided. One of the most iconic moments in the history of the show. Roddy, the clear opposition, leading the antagonistic force who eventually just runs out of pawns. You have Jerry, who's this all-around father figure who thinks he's like playing 5D chess. I think he's the first case ever of veto-itis, like a variation of HOH-itis. Kiara is the evil queen. Eric's kind of an NPC, but hey, at least he has some funny moments where he talks in his sleep. And his eviction needed to happen for the story to get better, for Kiara to lie to Lisa, for Danielle to trick Kiara, for the game to reach another level. Josh is super creepy, but also kind of sentimental. It doesn't hold up as well, but hey, early season slime ball gets the boot. Could be worse. Even Lori, the first evicted, brings the heat in one week, way more than we usually get from a first boot. There's such a natural progression week to week all season, and it all fits so soundly. Everyone builds on each other, and I think it's a rare season that gets better with each passing week. Outside of Danielle losing so dramatically, for me it's a season with everything you could ask for. Multifaceted players worth paying attention to, lots of humor, both intended and not so much, strong bouts of gameplay and strategy and tactics tactics with the conclusion that leaves you stunned. And when I went back and reviewed it all not long ago, I understood why Danielle lost, even though I wish she hadn't. But I don't always need to get my way to be happy, and I've realized it's much more about the journey than the destination if I had to pick one. I came into this house with one goal. I came in here for an agenda, and the agenda was to make it to the final two. To make it to the final two. I approached Jason. So we played, we plotted every week. Boom, 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 boom. And let's go. We plan to make it to the end. I was diabolical, Lisa. What's done is done. I had a good fight. And this was a good game. Number two. Well, we're in the top two. Not much to hide here at this point, so let's reveal the final mystery. My second favorite season is absolutely gonna be about the journey, more so even than Big Brother 3, and it is Big Brother, it's Big Brother 6. BB6 is my runner up, and it's one of the only seasons on my list outside of my number one, and probably my number 21, that didn't change placement at any point. It feels right being here. I'm gonna go on a tangent for a second and just say that I've talked about this before, but there are a lot of ways to watch Big Brother. Feeds, no feeds, watching the episodes every week, maybe a healthy or unhealthy mix of both. Maybe you binge the seasons after the fact because you've shown up late to the party. There's no wrong way to slice this birthday cake, and I strongly regard my viewing experience for each of these combinations because no two season experiences for me have been the same. I showed up to Big Brother halfway into this series run, and go figure, my top four seasons are all seasons that I never got to watch on the feeds. I'm not sure what that means if having feeds hurt seasons, but based on the audience reception as well as my own, I, I, I just don't think so when it comes to Modern Big Brother, and regardless, I will never have the feeds experience for these older seasons either way. 
For me, Big Brother 6 was the greatest binge experience I have ever had while watching this show. And because I have watched half these seasons only ever on a binge, that is a huge aspect for me when it comes to ranking them, when it comes to spending an entire month on this one video series. I love the split house of BB6. As a newbie watching this show on a binge, I found my tribe in the Sovereign Six Alliance, and I wanted so badly to see Kaser and Janelle and James and Rachel, Howie, maybe even Sarah, why not? I wanted them to take it home after the first few weeks of the game. Kaser may not be the best big brother, but damn if he doesn't make for good television. I didn't care much for the friendship or, or the nerd herd. I wasn't driving with their holier than thou attitude, how they had to be the fan favorites, how they thought they were the better people, the good people on this season. Never a good look to say something like that, by the way, just a tip. The sheer amount of comedy that came with the contentious nature of the BB6 house is almost unparalleled, uh, perhaps only rivaled by my number one. It's America's choice. The house guests are missing their friends and family. Who would you like to receive a phone call from home? The possibility that I might get a phone call, that's probably the best thing I've heard since I've been in this house. I woke up and I said, today was gonna be a good day. Oh my God, the cell phone. Oh my God, it's ringing! It's ringing! Hello? Oh my God, Michael? What are you doing? What's up, my babe? What are you doing? Nothing. Sitting in the living room. Ask him what the world's like. Did Britney Spears have her baby? <laughs> it hurts my feelings to know that America loves Janelle. The house guests are missing their loved ones, and you're going to friggin' get Michael to call Janelle? I mean, that's just crazy. That's stupid. You know what? If America did honestly pick her, then the fans that watch this show are all pieces bottom line. It was so cartoony, so over the top, so ridiculous. It was perfect TV. It's not too serious, but serious enough to drive the stakes up even higher than usual. The new house design was a breath of fresh air in my opinion. I felt like I could make sense of it, weirdly enough, just visualizing it with two floors and a secret room and a cool, if not short-lived, secret partner twist. The drama starts right away and it never lets up. You have Cappy and Michael, Kaser and Yvette, Janelle and Jennifer, or Bo or Maggie, Howie and April, and Pepperoni. And while the gameplay isn't exactly at the highest caliber, that's okay for me. There are plenty of other seasons with great gameplay. BB6 gave me both a team to invest in and root against, and every eviction episode I was reeling from who won or who lost, holding my breath like never before while watching the show, being so crushed or elated at every outcome. I cared about every week. And that pendulum of power just kept swinging back and forth, and it was so cataclysmic, taking hits from side to side, and looking back, it was all for the better. That's what I want out of a season of Big Brother. And yeah, you know what? We had Maggie playing a great game too, one of the best we've ever seen, at least after Cappy left, because, you know, she was totally willing to fall on the sword for him. Convincing Howie to take a shot at James, being the glue holding her lines together, she plays such a strong game, locking in the jury votes by the time the jury had just begun, having Jennifer do a dirty work by taking out Kaser after the greatest and longest competition in BB history. Going into this endgame, I would have loved to see Janelle take this one, but Maggie did a lot to deserve it, and I respect the social hustle. I wasn't rooting for it, but I do respect it many years later. Not exactly the ending I was hoping for, but damn if she didn't do enough to get those four votes. BB6 is not a season for everyone. I have heard its complaints. It's a very character-driven and drama-heavy season, but for an unscripted show to have that, as well as a decent amount of gameplay in between, I think it's more than enough to keep me entertained. Definitely deserving of being my number two. On the chessboard was when I discovered what was going on. Okay, sir, you're next. You have 30 seconds to make your move. I truly believe you that it's not personal. It's not. But you know the game just got really nasty. You sealed my feet. No. I sealed your partner's feet. I caught the bigger fish. Number one. I wonder what's left. Plot twist, it's actually Big Brother 19 this whole time. Fooled you guys, BB19 is number one, BB10 is dead last. I'm a psychopath. So let's talk about Big Brother 19 and why it deserves to be number one. Okay, nope, 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 I'm not a psychopath. But number one, it's Big Brother 10. 
And it's always been number one. Big Brother 10 has always been number one at the top. I, I don't think that was too shocking of a reveal. This season has it all. Great cast, everyone brings something. Even Angie, probably the least memorable. At least she had an attitude. Steven, the second boot, doesn't even go up to the HOH room for the reveal. No, nobody does that, but Steven did. In week two, and it cost him, Brian, the first boot, holds a puppet show to reenact his demise. He over-strategizes and has an entire coup set out against him, and it's, it's truly something else. Literally week one, there's an uprising. We get the Coven Alliance, we get Keisha Smith running the game, we get Jesse versus Memphis in week four with the iconic Keisha's birthday, a night to remember. I've watched the entire thing from clips and it's just as good when unedited. We also have the great sparring match right after Jesse gets evicted, an underreported bout with Michelle winning HOH and yeah, that pendulum is flying. Meanwhile, the eventual final two and, and really just Dan, the winner is remaining calm. The calm in the storm, the brilliant tactician, throwing vetoes despite being nominated, laying low and winning over the fans, picking a good set of allies. You, you can't go wrong with Rennie or Keisha or Libra. Rennie's another delight. So many funny moments with her, such as being aggro with Jesse or messing up the time zones or just getting ticked off by Dan for whatever reason. She really does tell us how inappropriate all of this is. All these players hold their own and weren't afraid, weren't backing down or bucking to someone else. Sure, Dan ultimately ran circles on a logistical level, always a few steps ahead, but at least this cast had a mind of their own, each of them working their hardest to win. Heck, even Jerry wins a crucial HOH at the final five when he is totally outnumbered. And the Keisha blindside at the final four, the betrayal, that was gut-wrenching to watch. But all of these moments make the season more intense, more captivating, more exciting, because that's the name of the game. Only one person can win, not three, or four, or six. Dan hosts the predecessor to his funeral, the veto roulette, and the betrayal of Ollie, and just drops bombs to the point where half the jury think he's a plant by CBS. He's America's player, which he kind of was for one week, but still, not the same thing. There isn't a dull moment in BB10. The entire cast is fire. Every single week for me has something to work with and enjoy. Heroes and villains, complex game players, drama, huge blowups, and heck, you want good TV? Is that what you want? Yeah, I do. But with a side of cake. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Keisha. Anybody want cake? Think about any time when you gamble, you're taking a risk. And in this house, someone's gambled with someone else's safety. And unfortunately, you better know who's making a bet for you. And in this case, Ali, you lost the bet. Michelle, go on the block. And that is the finalized rankings. For those of you who watched this entire video, you have my eternal gratitude. And for those of you who skipped ahead just to see if I had anything else to say at the very end of the video, well, what's up? I see you. In the end, that is all 21 iterations of the mainline seasons of Big Brother ranked in one long video. Took me about two years of rewatches and a whole month to edit together. It's a lot, but nonetheless, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to take a break from watching YouTube videos, you know, every now and then. Although again, I appreciate you checking out this one. And I will see you in the next one once I maybe one day do this for Survivor. We'll see. Yeah! Talk like this. You like that? This is better than ah. This guy got two left feet over here. Ah. I told you that already. Ah. I can't dance at all. Hayden got two left feet, man. When he dances, this kid can't dance for nothing. To save his life, this kid can't dance. Uh, uh, uh.